All right. Good, Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's collaboration between the ESEA federal programs team and the assessment team here at the Maine Department of Education. I am Cheryl Lang, and I'm the ESEA Federal Programs Director. I am joined by my fellow director, Jody Bozio smith who will introduce herself and her team shortly. This informational session will provide you with a deeper understanding of where we currently are at with our new uh, to the state assessment, NWEA, what, the data, what data is currently available and how it impacts goal setting for the ESEA consolidated application. We will be recording today's session for future reference and for those who could not be with us in this meeting. Therefore, we ask that you keep yourself on mute until invited to ask questions. But in the meantime, if you do have a question, you can pop it right into the chat and we'll monitor the chat throughout the presentation so we can address all questions. We will use the questions to add to the frequently asked question document that we're working on that will be another helpful resource. Krista, next slide, please. All right, so at this time, I would like to ask the federal programs team to introduce themselves, and then I'll hand the mic over to Jody Vazio smith for the assessment team, and we'll get started on the informational session. So I'm gonna start off by asking Jess Karen to introduce herself, and then Jess, if you can bounce it off to someone else within the team, that would be great. Is Jess with us? All right. No, How I think she's in another meeting. I'll say hi. It's Rita Pello here. You guys know me, uh, ESCA uh, Regional Program Manager for Hancock and York, and the other Title I coordinator. I'll, I'll bounce it to Ryan. Hi, good morning, folks. Ryan Reed, Title II coordinator here, and also the Regional Program Manager for the Mid Coast and Washington regions. And I know Renee is with us, so I'll pass it to Renee. Thank you, Ryan. My name is Renee Riley, and I'm the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator, uh, working with our Tier 3 identified schools, and I will pass it on to Daniel Weeks. Uh, if he is not on, how about Travis? Travis and I are just coming late from a meeting, so I'll just introduce myself, Renee. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm one of the Title I coordinators, and I apologize for running a few minutes late. I'm sure Travis, if he's here, feel free to introduce yourself, but if not, we can move right along. All right, we'll move right along. And yes, this is just the classic example of how we are just running from meeting to meeting and how we collaborate to make everything work here at the department. That was the perfect example. So at this point, I will turn the mic over to Jody Abazio smith who is the director of the assessment team. Jody. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Jody Basio smith I'm currently serving as the director of assessment for Maine DOE. I'm going to pass it along to Dr. Regina Lewis. who of course was not ready to unmute, but hi, I'm, I'm uh, Regina Lewis, affectionately known by the teams as Dr. G, and I'm the coordinator of the NAEP and the International Assessments. Krista? Hi everyone, I'm Krista Averill. I'm the assessment coordinator for the NWEA or NUEA Assessments, as well as the Main Science Assessment. Thanks, Krista. So as many of you might know, this session was born out of some FAQs that we were receiving from the field with the transition to the new Maine through year assessment in spring 2023. We had some excellent questions from our colleagues around the establishment of ESEA application goals, um, particularly given the one time delay to receiving the student results data that will occur in spring 2023 due to the necessity of standard setting for the new assessment. So here's our agenda for today. We're going to provide a little background on the main three-year assessment information for many of you who are our district assessment coordinators and attending regularly scheduled office hours. This will probably be familiar information. We're going to talk through ESEA application goals for 2023-24, 
what data is available and provide some examples. We'll reference ESEA performance report goals for 2022-23. And we also have both teams here for the end of the session for any additional questions and support you may have, whether it's related to the assessment or if it's more ESEA federal programs specific. So that's just an outline of our time today and I'll pass it along to Krista. Thank you. So just a housekeeping item before I jump into this information, we actually are utilizing the Q&A feature today. So at the bottom of your screen in that toolbar, you'll see a Q&A. Please place all of your questions there and they will be answered by the teams. The chat feature is available, but that's only for private messages to the hosts and co-hosts today. So again, please put your questions in the Q&A. Sorry about that. Beginning in spring 2023, the new main three-year assessment in math and reading will replace math growth as the state assessment. Both math growth and the main three-year assessment are designed and created by NUIA. Both math growth and the main three-year assessment are computer adaptive, providing questions below, on, and above grade level, and both produce nationally normed RIT scores. The main three-year assessment also produces a four-digit mean-specific performance score aligned to one of four achievement levels, well below, below, at, and above state expectations. Lastly, the main three-year assessment also meets federal peer review requirements for a summative criterion reference portion of the spring assessment. Peer review is a process that all state assessments must go through. Due to spring 2023 being the first administration of the main three-year assessment, score results will be delayed. Spring 2023 RIT score results will be available in the main three-year assessment platform in July 2023. The four-digit main specific performance score and achievement levels will be available in early fall. For all future administrations of the main three-year assessment, NUIA has indicated that you will be able to access results in their platform in 24 to 48 hours. Due to the delay in RIT scores from the spring 2023 administration, the assessment team recommends growth goals for the 23-24 school year rather than achievement goals. Here are two goals, one for reading and one for math that mirror each other. From the fall 2023 administration to the spring 2024 administration of the main through year assessment, at least 45% of students will meet or exceed their projected RIT score in math or in reading. We're gonna take a moment to break down these goals and discuss what they actually mean, where you can find the information needed to track them and why 45% is an appropriate and achievable measure. Many districts and schools have become accustomed to using map growth reports to develop their goals and you can continue to do so. Map growth reports will be available for the spring 2023 and future RIT score results provided that the SAU or school rosters their students in the math growth platform prior to the close of each assessment administration window. For spring 2023, schools should roster their students in the math growth platform prior to May 26. For clarification, rostering your students in math growth in spring 2023 will not expedite delivery of your RIT scores, but it will ensure that you can see your spring 2023 through year assessment RIT score data in MAP growth reports. At this time, schools that do not roster their students in MAP growth during an assessment administration window will not see those RIT score results in their MAP growth reports. Please note that the four digit mean specific performance score and achievement level results will not be incorporated into MAP growth reports. These results will appear only in the through year assessment platform. So let's look at what it means for a student to meet projected growth. RIT scores are nationally normed and allow for the comparison of a student's achievement and growth to the expected achievement and growth of students in the same grade level across the nation. In order to create these norms that define average growth, NUIA collects data from between 3.6 and 5.5 million test scores from 500,000 to 700,000 students spread across all 50 states. NUIA's 2020 Map Growth Normative Data Overview is based on data gathered from 2015 to 2018. Student growth norms exist for fall to winter, winter to spring, and fall to spring. Because NUIA updates its normative data every four years, 
the 2020 data is the most current and we can expect new normative data to be released next year in 2024. Growth norms developed for the 2020 MAP growth study reflect the common observation that the rate of academic growth is related to the student's starting RIT score. In the elementary grades, for example, students starting out at a lower RIT score tend to demonstrate greater raw RIT score growth compared to students in the upper grades. The growth norms table on this slide shows the mean or average RIT score growth on the reading assessment when the average grade level RIT score in other words, the 50th percentile score is used as the starting score. In each case, the starting score is treated as a factor when predicting growth. A student's projected RIT score is the predicted future score for a student who makes typical growth based on NUIA national growth norms. Projections take into account the student's initial score, grade level, subject, and time between tests. The projected growth is the change in RIT score that about half of U.S. students will make over time based on student growth norms. The student's initial score plus projected growth equals projected RIT score. On the MAP Growth Achievement Status and Growth Summary Report, you can see highlighted here in the yellow box the student's projected RIT score as well as the projected growth. In addition, shown here in the red box, MET projected growth indicates yes if the student's term-to-term -term growth equaled or exceeded the growth projection, and no if the growth was less than projected. The percentage of students who met growth projection found at the end of the report is the percentage of students whose end-term RIT scores met or exceeded their individual growth projections. Nationally, about 50% of students will meet or exceed their projected growth. So one way to track students' progress toward meeting projected growth would be to generate an achievement status and growth summary report after administering the winter three-year assessment. If you choose fall to winter as your growth comparison period, shown here in the green box, you can see which students have met their mid-year projected growth. The growth index outlined here in the purple box will tell you to what degree students met or didn't meet their projected growth. A growth index of zero means that the student met their projected growth exactly, or there was zero difference between their actual and projected growth. A positive growth index indicates that the student exceeded their projected growth. A negative growth index indicates that a student did not meet their projected growth. For example, a student with a growth index of positive four scored four points higher than their projected growth, and a student with a growth index of negative two fell short of their projected growth by two points. So let's revisit the two suggested growth goals shown earlier. First, both goals are specific, measurable, time-bound, and easy to track. By continuing to roster your students in the MAP Growth platform during each main three-year assessment administration, you can access the percentage of students who met or exceeded their projected RIT score in the Achievement Status and Growth Summary Report. When generating that report, you select a growth period from fall to spring. We know that nationally, about 50% of students will meet or exceed their projected RIT. And so a local goal of at least 45% of students meeting or exceeding their projected RIT keeps the goal realistic and achievable. And before I hand it over to Ryan, I'm just gonna answer the question that currently appears in the Q&A. So it says, we roster with Clever and Tenuia year round. Can I be assured that will be appropriate to get the growth data and MAP growth reports for the spring 2023 main through year assessment? So you would need to ensure that the rosters you input from Clever match the rosters that are in NEO. Um, NEO and Synergy remain the source of truth for the rosters. And so we would need to be absolutely certain that those SSIDs for students match in the rosters that you're loading. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ryan. All right. Thank you, Krista. So in a moment, uh, we're going to invite Krista back in, and she's going to talk about the timing of the release of some of the data from the main three-year assessment. The ESEA team wants to assure all of our LEAs that any delay or timing in the release of state assessment results will not negatively impact the submission or approval of your FY24 ESEA applications. This includes both substantial and final approval. 
SAUs should continue to use all the relevant data points you have available to you uh, in order to complete the annual updating of the comprehensive needs assessment. This may include your spring RIT scores, your fall and winter map growth data, and any other local data points the district gathers and finds relevant as they try to triangulate and figure out what their high needs areas are. And then you use those high, ne high needs areas, of course, to develop your goals in the FY24 ESCA application. But again, to reiterate, SAU should use whatever data you have available at the time to update your comprehensive needs assessment. So as we make this transition to the main three-year assessment, there will be some impact for some SAUs on the goals they set in their FY23 ESCA application. Of course, we have many different SAUs in the state of Maine, and as you can imagine, every one of them sets their goals a little bit differently. But what we're going to do is review some options for reporting on goals that specifically focused on achievement levels for math and literacy on the state assessment. We want to make sure everyone understands that we are not going to ask you to go into your ESEA application and change your goals as those are set and approved and they are a historical record. So we want to keep the goals you've set regardless of any change in assessment. All right, I know this is a little blurry here because we've blown up the screenshot to a rather large size, but this is the page on your performance report this past year where districts reported on their goals. And I just wanna draw everyone's attention to the language we used when we created this page because it was very intentional. We've listed out your goals, the proposed outcome and proposed indicators that were put in last spring or fall when this district got their ESEA application approved. And for the performance report, we're looking for your actual indicators and actual outcomes. We've learned, especially in the last few years of the pandemic, that what a district plans to assess, what indicators they're going to use uh, in that summer or fall, hasn't always lined up with what they're able to assess come the next springtime. So we provide districts with some flexibility to report out on what they're actually able to measure. And that flexibility is something we're, for some of us, going to need to use here. The key is going to be making sure you communicate with your regional program manager if you're in that situation. I know I can personally speak to a number of districts this year who proposed an indicator that they were not able to measure. And so they reached out to me, we talked through some solutions, and they reported out on what they were able to measure on something that was comparable to what they had proposed. So we're going to take a look at what scores will be available and when for your performance reports due November 1st. So the spring 2023 main through year assessment RIT scores will be available in the preliminary student results data files in July 2023 and operational reports in the Acacia platform, as well as in map growth reports in August 2023 within the map growth platform. Please note when comparing the fall 2022 to the spring 2023 results that RIT scores from map growth and the through year assessment will be comparable and nationally normed but the achievement levels of, for example, of below, at, and above expectations will not be comparable. The achievement levels generated by the main three-year assessment state-specific score will be well below, below, at, and above state expectations. These achievement levels will not be comparable to the below, at, and above expectations provided in the ESSA dashboard for the Map Growth Administrations, nor will they be comparable to the five percentile bands reported in MARS for Map Growth. One solution would be for districts to use the cut scores that align with the spring 2021 and spring 2022 achievement levels at each grade level and apply their new RIT score data. A key limitation to this potential solution is that the school would need to use grade-specific achievement level goals as RIT cut scores vary by grade level. In addition, depending on your experience and fluency using CSV files, this is potentially time-consuming. A link to the cut score tables and additional explanations regarding the spring 21-22 and spring 23 achievement levels is included on this slide, and these slides will be distributed to all registrants at the conclusion of today's session. 
A second potential solution would be for districts to set achievement goals based on what they hope to see for RIT score results within the 2023 main through year assessment based on NUIA's 2020 map growth normative data. Because the normative achievement data is divided by both grade level and subject, any achievement goals established using this process would need to be both grade level and subject level specific. An example goal is on the spring 2023 administration of the main through year assessment, at least 45% of grade eight students will earn a score of 221 or higher in math. You'll notice that I used at least 45% of students in this goal, similar to the growth goals shown previously. This is because the score shown in the achievement norms table is the score at the 50th percentile. So in other words, nationally, 50% of students score above this number and 50% score above. And I'm going to hand it back over to Ryan. All right, so Chris has done a great job explaining uh, what data points we'll have with the main three-year assessment and how those can be used if you set ESEA goals based on achievement levels. If for some reason the two options presented here are not sufficient, another option is to use whatever alternative local data sources you have that may be comparable to the goal you set. So some examples I've seen in the SEA applications in the past include DRAs, Fontas and Pinnells, some districts use STAR assessments, and a number of districts also have this locally chosen and locally developed assessment systems that they can report out on that give a similar answer to what they would have proposed in their ESEA application. Of course, this isn't uh, an exhaustive list, and I know not all these assessments apply to all grade levels. Uh, just trying to give you some examples and some ideas to help think a little bit outside the box as we report out on goals uh, with the new main three year assessment. And so at this point, we will take questions. I did see in the Q&A, we had a question about returning to slide 16. So I'll do that right now. Okay, so the question was, I'm attempting to distinguish between the July and August publication dates. So for the July 2023 preliminary student results data file, that is a CSV file that will be available to district assessment coordinators, district technology co coordinators, and others with similar roles 